Sodium apochloride is a commonly used irrigant in root canal treatments because it has a good antibacterial property and also it has a, an excellent ability to dissolve tissues, especially the pulpy tissues. However, if this hepro extrudes out of the tooth, then cytotoxic effects could take place. And uh, if such things happen, we have very unpleasant uh, experiences. I'm talking about both the dentist and the patient. So, how can hypochloride leach out of the tooth? There are two ways. One is leaching from the outside and the second is leaching from within the tooth. That is through the apex of the tooth. Let's see how they leach from the outside. One is uh, from leaking rubber dams and the second is not using the correct syringes or the way you should use the needles. Step one is uh, to use a thick or a medium uh, rubber dam sheet. For me, it's always a thick or a medium. Thin is only for split dams. When you use a thick or a medium rubber dam sheet, uh, the rubber dam tends to hug the neck of the tooth and uh, this in a way isolates or prevents leakage from the outside. Second, always use a rubber dam template. If you don't use a template and if you happen to punch holes very close to each other, this is exactly what can happen. If you look closely in that picture, you can see that uh, the punch holes are too close, leading to stretching of the dam. And when the dam is stretched, there is a gap, leakage of the uh, hypochlorite occurs this way. Another technique, the next step is to use a clamp rock dam release. Uh, for me, this is very common. I like to use it for every, every patient of mine. So let me show you how I do it. If you watch closely, you can see a gap over there near the bow and along the neck of the tooth. So literally, we want to close this gap. So what I would do is I will stabilize the dam with my finger, rock the clamp. So keep the claws on the lingual side, release on the buckle, rock it, release the dam, bring it back and release the forceps. So the clamp locks back. And I do the same thing for the lingual side as well. So this way, what I get to do is the buckle and my lingual sides, I get the rubber dam to hug or get as close as possible to the neck of the tooth. The next step would be to floss the mesial and the distal sides of the tooth. Okay, you can watch carefully. I usually will place my floss, release it on one end and then pull the floss out from the buckle aspect. Do not tuck in and pull out. That way you can also release the dam out. Once you're done for the mesial, you need to go behind the bow of the clamp, go into the distal, release it again. So now you can be sure that you've secured this rubber dam and it holds the neck of the tooth, the entire tooth hugs the tooth. So this can prevent sodium hypochloride leakage from the outside. Next, coming to the type of syringes. For me, I always recommend to use a Lear locking type of syringe. I don't use the normal, uh, the older version of syringes which you just plug in your needles. I prefer the lock type. Reason, if you use a lock type, chance of leakage is very, very, very low or it doesn't usually happen. Whereas if you use the regular ones, the older ones, at times I've had this uh, experience where I try to pump in the irrigant and uh, I used a little too much force and that needle popped out and you know it causes a splash of this hypochloride. If it happens and if your patient is not wearing a protective eyewear, you could probably you know get this hypochloride all over the eyes and you know a lot of accidents can happen. Also very important if you get this hypo to spill on the patient's shirt or uh, on your clothing you know you tend to damage it yeah so that's very important and uh, second coming to needle always bend the needle away from the hub do not bend at the hub of the needle can cause breakage can cause leakage okay and uh, you can also use designated needles so the one you see there on the right is an irrigating tip special
specially made for hydrotic irrigation. Next point is we are going to talk about extrusion, how to prevent extrusion from the apex of the tube. So first valid point is to use a side vented needle. I like to use the open or uh, the notch type or uh, sometimes I also like to use the close end side vented ones. Both serve their purpose, they are very good. Uh, prevent extrusion to a great extent. The next uh, tip, tip number seven is to always make sure that you have ideal working length determination done. For me, it is always the apex locators. And one point to add here, when you're doing your shaping, try to recheck your length during your rotary shaping. For me, I always check when I go to my S2 files and also when I go to my finishing files. This is just to make sure that if there is an alteration in the length by maybe 0.5 or 1 millimeter as the canal gets longer, I mean the canal gets uh, straighter, sometimes there could be a change in the length. So I just want to make sure that my length is always maintained. Okay. Next tip is to never lock or wedge the needle in the canal. The only time you do it is when you're going to give an intrapulpal injection. Watch this video. You can see me moving my needle up and down, up and down. This way you can avoid wedging your needle, positive pressure, extrusion of hypochlorite. Coming to the ninth tip is always make markings 2 to 3 millimeter from the working length. This is not only for your needle, it's also for your irrigation activation tips. What you see in the picture is an eddy tip. They already have their markings, but I like to recheck and uh, keep it two millimeters short of my working length. And you can see that once I go in for activation, I stay with the mark at my reference point. So I know my tip is not at the apex, but rather short of the apex. If you go to the apex, what again happens? You will tend to push a little amount of irrigating solution beyond the apex. Coming to the last point is the amount of pressure that you use. What you see in the picture is the ideal way to hold the syringe when you irrigate it or you, you, that's how you give the pressure. But I have seen some of my friends use it the other way. I've seen them use the thumb, the pad, you know, like how you see in the video. That, it, it, it comes in very handy to, you know, use it in that style. But what you don't realize is you will end up using a lot of pressure and uh, in return you might extrude your hypochlorite outside. Thank you for watching this video and uh, my next video is going to be on management of hypochlorite extrusion. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and you will be notified when my next video is out. Thank you.